Well, for more on the screen time impact on children, I spoke to Thomas Robinson. Thomas is a professor of pediatrics and of medicine at Stanford University. I began by asking about the role of tech companies in this growing issue. Too much of what we see is sort of a um, caveat emptor approach, which is buyer beware, is that the expectation is with these um, commercial products that they put them out there and it's our responsibility to try and protect our children or, or ourselves from the potential damages. And I think um, companies really need to have much more responsibility um, for uh, taking uh, for, for taking those potential adverse consequences into, uh, into their thinking in terms of the design of these products. Um, clearly, uh, we can ask parents, and that's the first thing that, that most companies would suggest, or most people suggest, is that parents need to um, become the police or parents need to restrict access to their kids. And, and, but that's not really fair to most parents. It's really when you have such powerful forces that are um, attracting kids to these technologies and attracting their use and demanding their use um, and their excessive use, uh, it's not fair to ask parents to have all of that burden upon them. It's sort of like the same thing we deal with in terms of advertising to children uh, for, for unhealthy foods, is that when you spend billions of dollars to get kids to eat unhealthy foods, it's unfair to just put parents in a position saying you, that you have to say no all the time. So I think the burden needs to be not just on the consumers and not just on the parents, but be put back onto these companies um, to do something. Now let's also look at the issue of gaming. Obviously these devices can be used for a lot of things, but focusing on gaming, the World Health Organization identified gaming as an addiction. Talk more about that and the sort of impact that that might have. Yeah, gaming, and it goes beyond gaming as well. I know that the, the focus has been on a gaming addiction, um, and that's in, especially in, um, in Asia, has been something that they've been studying for a while and identified a set of criteria for um, in, in many Asian countries. But also our other interactions with our digital media, especially our, our portable media, um, is that people are spending so much time on their media. They're experiencing, in some respects, withdrawal, almost classic withdrawal symptoms from if um, their media are taken away. It's uh, creating adverse, uh, you know, negative um, effects on other parts of their lives and interfering with their lives um, and having negative effects on their health. Um, and so is very much very similar to other um, types of definitions of addiction as well. Now, we have seen some products like Kindle, for example, and with Amazon really putting these time limits, kind of building them in as part of the software. But for families who are trying to strike the right balance, you want to prepare your children for the high-tech jobs of the future. There's technology in schools encouraging it. Just a quick word of advice as to how families can strike the right balance. Yeah, it's funny. We always, we always used to get that um, in that in our studies of reducing screen time in the past, and this was when we were studying mostly television and video games and and, uh, and computer use before mobile phones were so prevalent in elementary schools and in, in middle schools, but um, that people would say, well, how is my child going to become a computer programmer? How are they going to be as competitive in the, in the job market? Well, they don't need to do seven hours a day on screens to do that. And also they're going to need the skills that they need otherwise, um, the critical thinking skills and the problem solving skills that you get from doing things um, off screens. Um, but the, the basic advice and what has worked the best for us um, with all of our interventions has been, for one, helping families set limits, um, putting in there are ways of uh, their software that is available to have um, to create barriers so that, that there are timeouts and things that occur. Um, you can uh, really, it's, it is at this point a lot of work for parents to, to monitor what their kids are doing and making sure that they're um, not using media that they don't want them uh, exposed to, um, and hopefully taking advantage of tools that will be coming out, hopefully will be coming out, to help parents do that. Again, though, that puts the burden on parents, and I really believe that the burden should be much more squarely on the people who are producing these technologies.